Today I'm going to share with you a tutorial on how to uncover your house's history. Have you ever wondered what your neighborhood was like when your home was built? Or how many different kinds of people lived in your house year after year? What were the original features of your home? And how has your house changed over time? Well, today we're going to share three ways on how to uncover your house's history. So a little bit about me. I am an architect, blogger, wife, mother, homeowner, professor, small business owner, HPA member, and neighbor. So welcome to this tutorial, and I hope that you will find it useful in uncovering some special traits about your home. I am also an old home owner. My house was built around 1905. I've spoken about it a lot on my All of Our Homes YouTube channel. We live in a folk Victorian farmhouse and I, when I say it was built in 1905, I really mean that it may have been built in 1905, but the specific build date was not listed. That was when the property was purchased and in the deed search that I've done, it showed that by around 1912 or 1913 that there was a building on this site. We have been working to make our house more eco-friendly and energy efficient and have been sharing that journey at allofourhomes.com. So if you have any interest in making your old house more sustainable, you should check that out. Our goal today is to learn the three methods that you can use for free at home to uncover the history of your house, or really for any old building. This applies for a commercial building that you might be looking up, which I actually use as a case study here because I worked on an old building and did a similar search for that project. So the first way that we're gonna do that today is by finding free, beautiful, historic maps to uncover the development over time in your community. The second way is by identifying architectural house styles and what time periods they may be from. The third way will be looking into the historic records of ownership for your property. And we will have a bonus at the end of this where I will talk about the biggest mistake owners make when renovating older buildings and historic structures. So starting with the first, we have our historic maps, which are also called the Sanborn maps. And what are Sanborn maps? These are beautiful old maps that were used for insurance to be able to understand what the fire hazards might be for each building. So they are color coded and have a lot of information within each map that show what the building type was, the construction material, the roofing material, how many stories there are, whether they're balconies or not. And this was done every 10 years or so, or maybe even more frequently. So you can go back in time and see what your neighborhood looked like and what buildings there were on your street, maybe before your house was built or after your house was built. And you can also look at your favorite city and see how it may have changed over time. So Sanborn maps used to only be at the library. I used them as an architect or actually an architectural student at the time um, to look up the different buildings that we were researching and we would have to go to the local library to find these Sanborn maps that were in these giant books. And now it has been made available online and is a free resource. You can find it at www.loc.gov under the collection Sanborn Maps uh, tabs. So it is through our Library of Congress that you can find these online. You can just Google Library of Congress Sanborn Maps or Sanborn Maps and that might just pop up. And then you can follow this step-by-step -step tutorial on how to download these maps and use them to research your own home or whatever other building you're looking into, or even if you're just looking into what your neighborhood and, and city looked like. 
So you'll first start by typing in the city and state for what you are searching for. And then the way that I like to search for these maps is to go to the oldest first. So instead of looking at relevance or title, I just go under and pick the date for the oldest map first. And then you click on the image to view all of the different maps that are available or pages. And then you can select each page or image uh, separately and then download those. So to download them, I recommend saving a JPEG that is a slightly higher resolution, um, but not so big that it will clog up your computer. So I usually pick the one that is the 1612 by 1912 pixels. So it's a small file, but you'll be able to read it and see what you need. And then you can right click the image to make it a little bit larger and then the save the image as and save it to whatever location, either your desktop or within whatever folder that you are putting all of these materials. And then as far as reading a Sanborn map, there are a lot of keys that you will find within each section of these Sanborn maps. And then there is a general key that I believe you can find uh, looking at the Library of Congress site. But here you can see that a lot of the buildings are color coded to show what type of material they are. So the key over to the right actually lists the colors. Um, it doesn't show the colors, but it lists them by words. So the yellow buildings are wood frame, red buildings are brick, blue represents stone, gray is for iron, and brown represents fireproof. I've never seen a brown building. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, but showing part of a neighborhood here, you'll see that this building is made out of stone. The yellow buildings are probably homes that are made out of wood frame. And then there are brick buildings such as the school here, and it looks like there's a garage up to the top right. And then you'll also notice to the right where the key is that there are there is information about the stories in the building so it shows a number if it's a one story or two story story structure and then you also have what type of roof so they have a shingle roof composition roof or slate or tin roof and then there's a lot more in here if you start to look more carefully uh, but it depends what information you want from the building that you're researching here is an example of a home that has a D for dwelling, which means the house. And then it is colored yellow, which means it's a wood frame building. And it has a two that you can see right next to the D, which is a two story dwelling. And then it has a one for a one story porch. And it looks like there are X's that show that the roof must have been a shingle roof. Now, this is what you might find when you are looking into Sanborn maps for your home or neighborhood. These two maps show the same area and same lots in 1922 and 1933. And you can see that in 1922, there were some empty lots, but by 1933, those lots had been filled in. And then if you look to the left, you'll see that this home had an X which represented a shingle roof, and then that roof must have been replaced for a composition roof, maybe with asphalt shingles by 1933. Um, that also could mean that there were asbestos shingles, so something interesting within the history of these homes. And then looking across the street at this dwelling, it shows in 1922 that it was a two-story home with a one-story porch in front, and then it looks like in 1933 that they added a wraparound porch to that home. And there are some other changes too. It looks like there was maybe a back porch that was added and that the roof style changed as well. So on to our second topic, which is the architectural house types on how to uncover your house's history. 
This is one of my favorite resources. It's called A Field Guide to American Houses by Virginia Savage McAllister. And if you don't own this book and you do own an old home, I recommend definitely adding this either to your Christmas or birthday wish list or purchasing it yourself. It is such an amazing resource for your own home and to uncover what your house may have looked like or what features might be new or which ones were original to the house. Plus, if you have an older home, you probably have older houses around you. You probably live in an older neighborhood. So this is such a fun guide to use when you're walking around an older neighborhood and discover a different house type and you can look up the history of that home as well. So one of the first house types, especially within the neighborhood I live in, is the folk Victorian home that was built between 1870 and 1910. And some of the features for the folk Victorian, which are less ornate than the other Victorians, which are Queen Anne and others, um, is that the porches had spindlework detailing and they also had a more um, national folk house form which means that they had a symmetrical facade instead of being asymmetrical, which is typical of Queen Anne. The folk Victorians had a more symmetrical facade, and then they added trim to the porches, uh, like I mentioned, with spindle work, detailing, and whatnot. So when I look at our house, I know that all of that detailing has been removed on the front porch, and that is something that we may try to add in the future. And another architectural house type is the Dutch Colonial, which is another one that I have within my neighborhood. And they were built between 1880 and 1955, which is a very broad range. And this falls into the Colonial Revival category. And what makes it a Dutch Colonial is that it has a gambrel roof. A very, very popular house type, especially out here on the East Coast, is the Craftsman Bungalow, which was built between 1905 and 1930. Features for the Craftsman are the low-pitched gable roof and also um, having a more square columns or column piers that extend to the ground level. And usually you'll have uh, it'll be a one-story building with maybe a half story up above, but there are two-story examples of this as well. And then between 1915 and 1940 was the Spanish Revival architectural house type. And these had low-pitched roofs, which really defined the characteristic of these with often being made of red tile and the wall surfaces are made from stucco. And later between 1935 and 1950, the Cape Cod architectural style became popular and there are plenty of these in my neighborhood as well. The Cape Cod style falls under the minimal traditional category, according to Virginia McAllister, and these are generally one story. And there are several versions of it with the gable and wing roof or a side gabled roof, which is the called the Cape Cod. So what you might find when you're looking at architectural house types well, you might find that there are similarities with other homes from the same time period. We actually have, I think, three or four homes that are exactly like ours. And so walking through our house and then seeing our neighbor's homes, we can see the differences of what may have been original to the home and that what might be a newer feature. So you can get clues for how your house may have looked, especially if there is a house in the neighborhood that has kept a lot of its original features, and it will give you ideas on ways to renovate it. The other things that you might find are if you look into, for example, historic books for Gothic revival homes, there are some great drawings and floor plans. 
and you can see what may have been original features to those house types and research that. And then for craftsman bungalows, there were a lot of kit houses that came out of this. And the Valonia is one example of that. And you can see the floor plan here. And then also, I think it might discuss the ceiling heights and how they may have changed from one time period to the other. So it can give you clues on when your house was built. And the third way that we're going to uncover your house's history is through a deed search. Now, what is a deed? A deed is a legal document that transfers the ownership of a property from one person to another. Now, here is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do a deed search. However, this is really more geared towards the state of Maryland. So your state might have something similar and if it doesn't, then you might want to do some research to see what the process might be for your state. But in general, you want to go to the Department of Taxation. So for Maryland, we you can look up the SDAT um, and follow this website. I'm not going to read it out. You can follow along as we go through this. Um, and then when you do your real property search, you'll select which county that you're looking for. And then you can search by street address or there are other options, but I always opt to search by street address. And for the street number, you just want to put the number portion of the street address and then the name of the street below. And then once you enter in that information, then you'll be able to find the deed numbers. And that's under the transfer information. So it would be helpful at this point to get out a sheet of paper and make three columns and put the date, uh, seller's names, and deed numbers all in a row so that you can keep track of this as you slowly track back one deed after another to find the original owners of your home. So then you will go to the Maryland State Archives and that website does request that you set up an account and it's free but you will need to enter in information to set up an account and once you've done that you either put in your email address and password and then you can select the county for your search and then you'll enter in the numbers from the deed and you'll see that you had a number and then a, a slash and then another number so the first number is the book number and the second number is the page number. And then after you enter in the book and the page number, or I think they also call it the librarian folio, then you will click go and it will take you to the deed. So this is where you can find through the deed, you will find other references to the book and page numbers or library and folio numbers and you continue to write those down within the columns that you just created and row after row you'll just track back. So then you go back to this page and put in the book and page numbers that you just discovered and then you go back further and further. So these are some things that you might find and this is what we found when we were looking at our deeds is that the land was purchased in 1905 and that it was an empty lot. So obviously our house was built sometime after 1905. And then when the next owners came about, the there was a building that was listed in 1913. So although I don't have an exact date for when our home was built, I know that it was built sometime between 1905 and 1913. Now time for our bonus tip. So if you have an old home, how do you save money on your renovation? Maybe you're thinking you've just got to live with it. It's just the way old houses are. Or I can just fix it myself. Or if it ain't broke, why fix it? I know that I was so nervous to do anything with my old house. I was thinking that this is too big of a project. Or what if it turns out looking bad? Or I just don't have the time or money for this. I was thinking it is overwhelming to work on my old house. But then I found a way to save money and to do it right. 
and that is through historic tax credits, and they save you money. So a historic tax credit can save you $50,000 on an old house rehab. And this is through the state of Maryland. Now, a lot of different states have historic tax credit programs, and I believe there's also a federal historic tax credit program. So you can take a look into what your specific state offers, but if you have an older home, definitely look into it. And what does this mean that you can save $50,000 on an old house rehab? Well, if the total project amount that you apply for is $250,000, you can receive 20% of that as a tax credit, which would be $50,000. And that's just within a two year period. In the state of Maryland, every two years you can apply again. So let's say that you have a lot of work that needs to be done and it equals out to around 200,000. Well, after the, that two year period closes, then you can apply again for another 200,000. And we have some resources for the historic tax credit. So I have a blog post at allofourhomes.com that talks about how to save with a historic tax credit. And then there's also a video about a little bit more, I guess, about our home and how we saved with our historic tax credit. So please take a look and there's a lot of information in there and a lot of good resources for you to use. If the idea of applying for a historic tax credit on your own seems too overwhelming and you want a little help with that, at Triple Line Studio, we do offer a historic tax credit consultation, which is a one hour virtual meeting, and we will walk you through the exact steps on how to apply in the state of Maryland. We have not expanded this program to other states as of yet, although we hope to in the future, but you can always feel free to reach out to a local architect who can walk you through this process or actually your local uh, board for historic tax credits, which in our case is the Maryland Historical Trust, and they are very resourceful in responding and answering questions. If you do not want to do any of this work on your own, you can always hire an architect or professional to do the entire package for you on your behalf. You'll save 20% because of the historic tax credit on that service. It actually applies for the historic tax credit. So you can ask Triple Line Studio. We will happily do that for you. If you're in the state of Maryland, we can apply for parts one and two on your behalf and then show you the exact steps on how to apply for part three. But just don't let it intimidate you um, into not actually trying for this historic tax credit. It can be tedious, but it definitely can be done. And don't be afraid to reach out to an architect and just have a conversation and see if maybe hiring a professional would work for you. And in the end, you will save thousands of dollars. You can visit our website at triplelinestudio.com so that you can reach out directly if you are in the state of Maryland and interested in this service. But if you are a homeowner, we have tons of resources on our blog for all of our homes, which is maybe where you're watching this video right now. And at allofourhomes.com, we have a lot of different information on our website. Underneath the renovating tab is a renovation resources page. Um, we are planning on moving that into its own tab. So if you don't see it under here, it might just be under resources. But definitely take a look for all of these different renovation tools. Um, we have tips on how to do a budget renovation, how to do a house history search as we're showing you here, and we also are sharing our own sustainable renovation of our folk Victorian farmhouse. And you can also check out our YouTube channel which even has more information. And that is also at all of our homes. And we have a, a sustainable home renovation playlist, which is talking about a 115 year old folk Victorian farmhouse and how we've been renovating it. Um, we talk about our bathroom renovation, how we're using electrical equipment instead of gas, how we are going with an electric car, 
We've also added geothermal to our home and talk about that process and what it was like to work with getting an energy audit. So you can follow along with our channel and we will continue to post all the updates on our home. As you know, it takes a while to renovate a home and we're still going through the process of making our home more eco-friendly and energy efficient. We also have a Houses with History playlist that has house tours and more information on how to find the history of your house in video format. And our latest video is a house tour of an 1887 Victorian style cottage, which is also known as the Highacre House in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. So to summarize what we've talked about today, we have discussed the three ways to uncover your house's history and showed you that as a tutorial. So one was to find free, beautiful historic maps to uncover development over time in your community. And those are the Sanborn maps. Two was to identify architectural house styles and what time periods they may be from. And three was to look into the historic records of ownership for your property, which is doing a deed search. And then we also had a bonus item, which was the biggest mistake owners make when renovating older buildings and historic structures was not applying for historic tax credits. I hope that you found this information valuable. If you did, you can leave us some comments in our YouTube comment section below. You can also reach out, as I mentioned, through alloforhomes.com or Triple Line Studio. And we would love to hear what else you would like to learn about. And we will do other workshops and tutorials regarding that material as well. And also, if you did uncover some murky history for your home, we would love to hear about it. So please add that in the comments. And to leave you with this thought, once you learn the history of your home, how do you plan to take care of it? Having an older house can be a big ask for people because they do always need work, but there are so many resources for learning about your home and what would be period appropriate for your home and what the tax credits and grants are so that you can make sure to keep your home as a contributing member to your historic district and be able to share that with others in your neighborhood. Thank you so much for stopping by our home.